Hey everybody. Today we're talking about conditional probability and the multiplication rule. Let's just start with an example illustrating the idea of conditional probability. In this table, we're seeing the results of a study in which a researcher contacted 1,250 adults, asking each one whether they prefer dogs or cats. First of all, let's just compute the probability that a respondent selected at random from this sample prefers dogs. There are 589 people that prefer dogs in this study out of 1,250 overall, so the probability of randomly selecting one that prefers dogs is 0.471, 589 over 1,250. Next, let's compute the probability that a respondent over the age of 55 prefers dogs to cats. So now we're just looking at the column in this table labeled 55 plus. In this column, there are 143 adults that prefer dogs out of 325 total. So if we select someone at random from that column, the probability of getting someone that prefers dogs is 143 over 325, or 0.44. Notice that the two probabilities are not the same. This is pointing to the idea of conditional probability, which is defined like this. The conditional probability of B given A is the probability that event B occurs when we already know that A has occurred. So in this last example, in addition to computing the probability of B, the probability that someone prefers dogs to cats, we computed the probability of B given A, the probability that someone prefers dogs to cats given that they're over the age of 55. Here's another example of conditional probability. Two cards are drawn from a deck without replacement. So one card is drawn, we look at it, we set it aside, and then we draw another. If the first card is a king, find the probability that the second card is also a king. So we've got two events here. The first event, call it A, is that the first card drawn is a king. And the second event, call it B, is that the second card is a king. So if the first event um, occurs, we've drawn a king. We now have 51 cards left, of which three are kings. Then the probability of the second one being a king is 3 in 51, about 0.059. Notice that this is different from the probability that the first card was a king, which would be 4 in 52, or 0 0.077. Conditional probability is particularly useful when we want to calculate the probability that two events, A and B, both occur. The tool here is called the multiplication rule. The probability that two events, A and B, both occur in sequence is given by this formula. Probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Roughly, we think of it as being the probability that the first event occurs times the probability that the second event occurs, assuming that the first one has already happened. For instance, the probability that two cards drawn from a standard deck without replacement are both kings is given by the probability that the first one is a king times the probability that the second one is a king, assuming that the first one already was a king. So the probability that the first one is a king is 4 in 52, four kings in a 52 card deck. The probability that the second one is a king, given that the first one is a king, is 3 and 51, as we computed on the previous slide. Overall, the probability that they're both kings is 0 0.0045, so not very likely. Here's another example. A server at a restaurant has observed that the chance that a customer orders alcohol, let's call that event A, is 40%, and the chance that they order an appetizer, call that event B, is 30%. And the chance that they order both alcohol and an appetizer is 20%. First of all, let's find the probability of A given B. That is, if we know that they've ordered an appetizer, what's the probability that they also order alcohol? So we're going to use this uh, same multiplication rule from the previous slide and then just fill in the things that were given in this problem. We know that probability of A and B, the probability that they order both, is 20%, and we know that the probability of, um, of B, that they order an appetizer, is 30%. Now we just have to divide both sides. The probability that they order alcohol, given that we know that they ordered an appetizer, is 2 thirds. 
Let's also compute the probability of B given A, the probability that they order an appetizer given that we know that they've ordered alcohol. So we're going to use the same formula, but now we're swapping the roles of A and B. The probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Again, we just fill in the blanks. We know that P of A and B is 0.2, and P of A is 0.4. Dividing both sides by 0.4, we get that the probability that they order alcohol, given that we know that they ordered an appetizer, is 1 half. Notice that these two conditional probabilities are different here. In general, the probability of A given B and the probability of B given A should be different. Two events are said to be independent if the probability of A given B is the probability of A, or the probability of B given A is the probability of B. Roughly speaking, this means that two events are independent if knowing whether one occurred doesn't give you any information about whether the other occurs. It doesn't help you guess at all. So, for example, in this last slide, we found that the probability of A given B was 0.5, while the probability of A was only 0.4. The probability of them ordering alcohol if we know that they order ap an appetizer is higher than the probability of just of them ordering alcohol. So those two events were not independent. Sometimes we'll therefore say that those events are dependent. Here's another example. A probability experiment consists of flipping a fair coin and rolling a standard die. So let's let A be the event that the flip is ahead and B be the event the roll is a six. Now, the outcome from the flip of the coin isn't going to give you any information about um, the outcome of the roll of the die. So these events are going to be independent. The probability of rolling a six, given that you flipped a head, is the same as just the probability of rolling a six. In each case, you get one in six. Another common definition of independence is that A and B are independent if and only if the probability of them both occurring is the product of the probabilities of them each individually occurring. This definition is equivalent to the one that we had on the previous slide just because of the multiplication rule which says the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. In the last slide our definition of independence was that the probability of B given A should be the same as the probability of B. Here's a few examples. In each case, we want to determine whether the pair of events I'm listing is independent or not. First of all, given getting diabetes if both of your parents have diabetes. These are dependent events. If both of your parents have diabetes, you're more likely to get diabetes yourself. Notice, however, it does not make it certain that you will get diabetes if both of your parents have it, and even if neither of your parents have it, you could still get it. This is a probabilistic statement, not a cause and effect statement. Second example, getting a five on the first roll of a standard die and getting a four on the second roll. These are independent events. The outcome of the first roll doesn't tell you anything about the outcome of the second roll. Smoking cigarettes and getting lung cancer. These are dependent events. You're more likely to get lung cancer if you smoke cigarettes. Again, notice that it's not a certainty either way. This is a probabilistic statement. Two cards are drawn from a standard deck without replacement. The first and second draws are both aces. These are dependent events. This is similar to the example we did a few slides ago, drawing two cards and getting kings. Final example. Two cards are drawn from a standard deck with replacement. So this time, we take a card out of the deck, we look at it, we put it back in the deck, shuffle it up, and then draw another card. In this case, the, the two events that the first draws an ace and the second draws an ace are independent. The outcome of the first gives you no information about the outcome of the second. Let's conclude with one more example using a table. A manager studies the accuracy of orders in their restaurant. They look at 960 um, orders for different meals at different times of the day and consider whether the customer got exactly what they were asking for. Question one, what's the probability that a randomly selected order from this data set was filled correctly? So 
We're taking one order from this entire data set. There are 842 possibilities for getting one that was filled correctly out of 960 total. So we do 84, 842 divided by 960, and we get 87.7%. What's the probability that a randomly selected dinner order was filled correctly? So this time we're only looking at the dinner column. We're doing a conditional probability. The probability that the order was filled correctly given that it was a dinner order is 249 divided by 280. The number of correctly filled dinner orders divided by the total number of dinner orders. 88.9% overall. Finally, is randomly selecting a correct order independent of randomly selecting a dinner order? In this case, the answer is no. The conditional probability and the probability of getting a correct order when you select at random from this set are not the same. One word of warning here. In this example, we're only considering classical probability. We're looking at this data set and picking one um, meal at random and asking questions about the probability um, for how that meal will be classified. The empirical question of whether future observations of these variables will be independent is more difficult because our data could include some random variability. In other words, even though the proportions aren't exact in the calculation we did in the previous slide, Perhaps if we did a lot more observations, they would be. In order to establish whether or not these variables really are independent from the um, empirical standpoint, we'll have to get into some chi-squared testing, and we'll do that much later.